But this is just a quick video to show how to install these Anderson power pole connectors onto the end of some wire. So first we'll start off by stripping the wire back. You've got to strip it back about uh, 3 eighths of an inch and uh, it's always a good idea to use some kind of an adjustable uh, wire stripper like this one here so that you don't nick uh, the wire uh, that you might be trying to, uh, to do here. I'm going to probably have to do this off camera because I may not be able to get enough uh, room on camera here to do this but I'm just rotating this around kind of gently as I squeeze the handles and then we should be able to pull off that insulation there. Let's see. There we go. So we've got a nice, uh, a nice strip there without uh, taking any of the wires off. And then I usually like to also put a little bit of a twist on that. Uh, that helps keep all the strands together. Uh, so when we slip it into uh, the contact there, it'll go in nice and cleanly. So let me strip the other one off here and we'll come back on video. Okay, with uh, both the wires stripped and a little twist put in them, uh, before we connect uh, or slide on the contacts here and crimp them, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of orientation. Uh, these power pole connectors are nice. These little plastic shrouds have got some features that allow you to couple them together. You can see a little bit of an indentation or groove on this side. You can see a little protrusion okay, on that side of them. And they look like just rectangular you know, slots, and, and, uh, but really they're dovetails. And what that allows you to do is slide them together. So if we take and, let me just see if I orient this the right way here, I might be able to see. So if we orient um, the slot of this black one along with the protrusion on the red one here, we can slide them together. And you can see how they kind of stay together and slide them together like that. And that kind of keeps them together. And uh, you can kind of orient them a couple of different ways, but uh, some of the uh, amateur radio groups and uh, emergency response groups have adopted this orientation uh, with the hoods kind of going over the top, uh, the, right, the red one being on the left and the black one being on the right. And if you make all of your cable assemblies this way, whether you're hooking up to batteries or hooking up to radios, if you follow the same convention, it'll make it easier for you to connect up uh, radios to power cords and things like that without having to worry about whether you've cross-polarized them. So with that orientation in mind, we'll use that when we hook, put the, uh, the terminals on the ends of the wire. So when these terminals uh, slide into the back of the connectors, they, they kind of go in in this orientation. Uh, you can see the connector here has got a little bit of a downturn on it. It slides into the back of the connector this way. Uh, and really hooks over that little metal spring that you might be able to see just inside uh, that connector. So when we go to put these then on the wires, we want to be sure that uh, we're going to have that right orientation on the wires here as well. So on the black one, which is going to be our negative, we want to make sure that uh, we connect, the, put that one on that way and crimp it down that way. And then the red one will do the same thing. Uh, make sure that those kind of hooks are pointing down. Okay. So just like that. So we'll crimp those on in that orientation so that when we, once they're crimped on and we slip them into the housing, they'll be in the right orientation. So let's uh, go and talk about uh, crimping. So in crimping those wires, uh, you really want to have the right tool. Um, there are lots of inexpensive crimping tools that are out there, and they'll have different profiles. Uh, in terms of what the die look like or the the ends look like that are going to actually do the crimp and If you're just putting little ring terminals on wires and things like that it, You know you can kind of use whatever you want But for these uh, power pole connections it really does pay to, to get one of the crimping tools that is uh, designed for it uh, Mainly because there's a pretty tight clearance inside that housing and you want to be sure that you don't have to distort the, uh, the, the Terminal in any way to get it into that housing so this one is a tri-crimp by West Mountain Radio. It's a nice, uh, nice tool. There are different dies available for this, so you can put different dies in to do um, you know, different types of terminals. So we'll use this uh, to make that connection. It's a ratcheting type uh, tool. So uh, what will happen is as you crimp down, you can hear it ratcheting. Okay. And the idea is that what you'll do is you'll crimp it down until that latch finally releases. You can hear it like that, and then you can let go. The important thing is not to uh, squeeze it past 
the point where the latch releases because you could potentially break the die uh, when you do that. So let's get ready to uh, crimp one of those wires. It's kind of tough to do this on camera, but let's see if we can do this uh, the right way. So uh, I've got this oriented the right way because this will slip into this housing, uh, the correct orientation. And uh, the way you use this connector, this here, will. Uh, this is a 30 amp connector, so that's going to go into the middle die here. And uh, so we'll slip that in and, uh, and then cramp down on it. So I'm going to pull the other wire up out of the way here. Okay. And position. Let's see if I can do this so you can actually see it on camera here. It's kind of tough to watch two things at once. So I'm going to slip this uh, inside here. Okay. And then crimp down on that. And uh, let me get uh, both hands on here. Okay. And we'll just watch that little lever down here. You'll actually see when it releases. Okay, so it just released. So now I'm fully crimped. We'll let this thing go. And now let's take a close look at that connection. You can actually see a, uh, a really nice uh, crimp to that. No bellow bellowing out. A nice crimp at the back of it uh, in there. And that's what a proper crimp should look like on these uh, power pole uh, terminals. But I've gone ahead and uh, crimped uh, the other terminal here. So both of these are now ready to go. Now, uh, let me bring up uh, the topic of soldering. Uh, a lot of people will like to then also solder these connections in place uh, to kind of solidify that even further. And, uh, and there's, there's two schools of thought there. Uh, the one school of thought, obviously, is that a, a soldered connection here is going to be solid. It's going to be much less likely to loosen up. Uh, and that kind of thing. So uh, a nice thing to do. And there's some good reasons for soldering. And I, I will sometimes do that. But the other school of thought is, is when you solder, the solder will wick down into uh, kind of the, the stranded conductors here. And then where the solder ends, you wind up creating kind of a, uh, a, a bending point because the soldered wire will be very stiff. The stranded wire won't be. And as a result, you'll get a point there that any stress that gets put on this terminal is going to create like a fracture line or could potentially create a fracture right where the solder ends. Um, crimp connections are when they're done properly are very reliable so I'll oftentimes not solder them. If I'm going to go into a situation where I know the wires are never going to be bent or dressed or things like that I'll, I'll solder them sometimes. But I, for what I'm doing here just the crimp connection is going to be enough. So let's take care of uh, inserting these into the uh, plastic housings. Okay, these are uh, ready to go inside the plastic housing with the you know, curves kind of pointing down. We'll take the housings uh, in this orientation like this with the hood over the top and we can slip both of these in here. And uh, you push them until you hear them click. And sometimes it can take quite a bit of force, especially if you're doing two at once. Uh, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll put a little screwdriver in the back. I just heard the red one click in there. And I always have to get the black one oriented right and get that one in place. And uh, let's see, I might have to kind of play with this a little bit to kind of get that in place. And we'll just do that off. Oh, there it goes. And push that in place, and now that clicked in place. So now both of those are in there. They're not going to come out. And we've now completed the power pole connection. Now there is a, a little hole here. Uh, some of the um, you know, suppliers will give you a little roll pin you can stick in there to try to keep these from potentially sliding apart uh, but I've never had a problem with them sliding apart so I typically don't put those roll pins in but to me it's just an extra piece of metal that might fall out at some point and short things out so I leave the roll pins out. Some people will also backfill uh, with some hot melt glue or some caulk or uh, things like that to create a little bit of a strain relief uh, where the wires go in and that's probably a pretty good idea, especially if you solder the connections. If you don't solder them, it's probably unnecessary. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful to see how to assemble these power, uh, power pole connectors. Uh, again, really convenient, nice, reliable connectors to use on uh, portable uh, electronic equipment. Thanks again for watching.